This is a brief discussion of things that a lot of people believe are mental illnesses or psychological disorders, but in fact are not. And some of this has to do with the popular misuse of clinical terms, terms like trauma or addiction. And you can see a clear increase in the prevalence of these words in everyday conversations to describe somewhat mundane, normal behaviors that we engage in every day. So this is especially true for the term addiction, where people will describe everyday things like um, having sex or playing video games or using social media as addictive. And there is no evidence that that's true for any of those things. In fact, I've also posted a couple of supplemental links, one to a video and one to an article, explaining how video games and smartphones and social media are not addictive things. In part, we have these inaccurate views of digital technologies because we have the belief that in general, technologies are unhealthy and unnatural. This clearly manifests in symptoms that people may experience based on the beliefs that technologies are unhealthy. So for example, some people suffer from what is called electrosensitivity. This is popularized in the show Better Call Saul with Jimmy's brother Chuck suffering from electrosensitivity. He believes that the light bulbs and batteries and other types of electricity around him are making him physically ill. But researchers who have studied this have determined that that's actually not happening. And in fact, they debunk this on the show itself. But in real life, researchers have conducted double blind studies where they deliberately expose people to electricity, but make them believe that they're not being exposed to electricity and they don't suffer any negative symptoms. So researchers call this a nocebo effect so that people tend to feel better when a stimulus they believe to be unhealthy is removed. The nocebo effect is in some sense the inverse of the placebo effect, which we talked about earlier in, this, in the course. The placebo effect, remember, is when people experience the effect of something based on the belief about that thing. So if we believe that we're being given an energy boosting substance, like an energy drink or something like that, and then we feel more energy, even if it's a sugar pill or something like that, which doesn't actually have any energy inducing properties, then we would call that a placebo effect. It's basically the power of suggestion. The nocebo effect is exactly like that, but in reverse. If you take away technologies that people believe are unhealthy and then people feel better, then that shows evidence for the nocebo effect. I also wrote an article for Psychology Today about a well-publicized study on Facebook deactivation and the nocebo effect. So I'll put a link to that on Canvas and you can read it if you'd like. But basically the study found that when people were given an incentive to deactivate their social media account for one month, they felt significantly happier. I suggest that the reason they felt happier is because of the nocebo effect.